All right, uh, I want to show you a brief lesson that has to do with polarimetry. If you look in your chapter 7 notes on the very first page, one of the slides is labeled optical activity and it has a diagram of this device called a polarimeter. And uh, I want to just kind of show you what the principle of how that works is uh, because it allows us to characterize chiral molecules and to be able to tell enantiomers apart from one another. And the key thing in that polarimeter is this object. This is a polarizer. This is the same kind of material that sunshades are made from. And most of the light does not go through it because only light that's vibrating in one particular plane can pass through. Um, and, and so that, that does block out a good bit of the light. And with a polarimeter, you actually have two of these polarizers. And if I stack two of them, one right behind the other, a lot of the light still gets through. And that's because I'm holding them in an orientation in which they are aligned with each other. But if I take one of them and start to turn it relative to the other, the light starts to fade out. You can't see through as well. And if they are perfectly cross-polarized, no light at all gets through. And that's what I would have here. We would say these are cross-polarized. And so with a polarimeter, you actually have both of these set up to initially be crossed. And in between these two, you would put a sample of some chiral compound. It might be a glass tube where the compounds dissolved in water or alcohol. But if you have just one enantiomer, then it will inevitably be true that it will rotate that plane polarized light by some amount. So that I find that even though I start off with these crossed, all of a sudden some light is getting through. And I have to turn one of these either clockwise or counterclockwise uh, to some extent to, to re-block the light from coming through. And so that, the amount that I have to turn the polar, polarizer tells me how much that light is being twisted by the molecules in the first place. And it's always going to be true that each enantiomer will rotate light in equal magnitude but in opposite directions. If one enantiomer rotates the light 20 degrees clockwise, uh, its enantiomer, its mirror image isomer will rotate it 20 degrees counterclockwise. If you have an equal mixture of the two enantiomers, a 50-50 mixture, that uh, they, they cancel each other out and no rotation takes place. But just as we use things like melting point and boiling point to uh, identify and confirm the identity of compounds, with enantiomers it's this polarimetry that, that really does that. So uh, you can read more about that in your textbooks certainly and maybe have a better appreciation for what that diagram is trying to show you.